Hi everybody, Patty Ann here. I'm hoping this is going to be a rather short video for you today, especially for those of you who like using embroidery machines and maybe even your uh, cutter, whether it's a silhouette or a scan and cut or a Cricut. So I'm going to show you the two things I'm talking about today. I'm going to make Valentine's Day cards and I'm going to combine embroidery with applique. So here's one that I made. And this is Sunbonnet Sue, and she's not somebody I really used to like at all. Matter of fact, I kind of really disliked her. But lately, with all the crap that's going on in the world, she's just sort of peaceful, kind of old-fashioned, and back in the olden days when things seemed like this. So I'm going to do the Sunbonnet Sue one for you. I also did this one. And this one is the applique right here, and all the black and red is stitching as well. Um, I will have the links for you for these down below. I'm not affiliated with them, but in case you want to get the same files. Also, stay tuned because I have a bit of a rant. So, let's get going with the card, and while it's stitching out, I'll tell you my rant. Okay, what you can see behind me is what we're going to do. This is a file that I got from Oma's Place. Again, I'll have it linked for you down below. It makes this really cute, cute card with applique. So, I'm just going to run through here with the stitch simulator very quickly. If you use an embroidery machine and you don't have Embrilliance software, you might want to consider getting it sometime because I really love using it and I am doing more and more tutorials with it. So, I'll go up here to where the little needle is and that opens the stitch simulator. And I'll just start rolling through it so you can see what's going to happen. The first thing it's going to do is make a box on my tearaway stabilizer, and I failed to show you everything we'll need, and I'll show you that next. But it's making a box on my tearaway stabilizer, and right here, it's going to put a little mark so that you know that's where the opening of your card goes when you place your card on to be stitched. Then it's going to do the hearts. This is the placement stitching so that you know where the fabric goes for your hearts. And then, it's going to do the stitching so that it tacks down the fabric for the hearts. And that's whether you've pre-cut it or not. Okay, And then after that, it's going to do the other two hearts. So that you can put the fabric on there and then trim around it if you need to. And continue on by then doing all of the fancy stitches on each of the hearts. Next comes the bows. And then finally, the little border at the bottom. So that's how that one stitches out. But let's look at the one I'm going to show more so today. It's called February Love, and it looks like this. By the way, as I said, it's a, what's she called? Sunbonnet Sue. Not a big fan in the olden days, but right now, I just feel like I need that peace, that home from what Sunbonnet Sue just seems to bring. Okay, this is basically what we need to make our card. So let's open a new page and I'll show you how to go about it. The first thing you're going to want to do is come up here to the Merge Design from the library and you'll go to Embrilliance Outlines. And then you're going to scroll down until you come to this. It says Shapes Number 1. I want the square, so I'm going to double click on that. It brings it in at a size that it always comes in at, 2 and 3 eighths, I think, by 2 and 3 eighths. I'm going to unlock this lock right here, and I'm going to change its width to 4.25 inches, Hit enter, and I'm going to change its height to 5.5, and hit enter. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to change this to stitches, so, and I'm going to make it a running stitch. So there it is. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open, and if you don't have Stitch Artist, you can probably figure this all out on your own without using it, but I'm just showing it today. So I'm going to come to February, this one right here, and open it, and there's my little girl, and I actually want her on this one, so I'm going to right-click on her and say Copy, and bring her into this one where we made the box and paste. Okay, as you remember, the opening is always on the left-hand side towards the little latch that you latch your machine onto. So I don't want her facing this way and have my card open here. I'm going to go ahead and twirl this around. 
so that she's like this. So when my card opens here, it's going to look right, okay? But that's going to be a little confusing to try to figure out what we're doing. So what I'm going to do instead is to go ahead and twirl this back around. <clears throat> and I'm going to come up here to the text tool. And I'm going to come over here to letters and type in the word love, L-O-V-E. And I'm going to change the font that I used. I think the one I used for mine was one that I purchased... Ariel, it's from Linny Penny, Ariel, and I put small. So now you can see that it's like that. It might be a little bit too big for my card, so I can make it a little smaller. And then the other thing I did with mine was, see these boxes that come over top of this when you're working with it? Let's scroll in a little bit. So when these boxes show up, like the one on the O, if I click the bottom triangle I can move all of that over like that okay now if I just want to move the V and what's after the V I can take this get the bottom triangle and move it over and again with the E I can take the bottom triangle whoops bottom triangle or this one actually and move it over just like that so there's the word love all right, let's scroll back out a little bit. We can come up here, actually, and come up to the compass rose and say hoop, and then my whole hoop shows in there. So I might like her a little bit higher on my card, or actually, I'm going to twirl her, remember? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the letters and her, and I'm going to come up here to edit and group, or I could have done control G. Then I'm going to go like this, because remember, it's going to open here. So I want it to be like that. And somehow I didn't twirl the love right. Oh, yeah, I did. This is, I'm making her a little bit cockeyed. Let's fix her feet. Her feet should be straight like that. Just like that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is get our hoop ready and our tearaway stabilizer. But before I do that, I told you I'd show you all the things that you'll need to make this little card. Okay, the first thing you'll need is your cardstock. And I cut my cardstock and then folded it in half. So the resulting piece was four and a quarter wide by 5.5 here high. So what this means is what I did was I took an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and just cut it in half and then folded it. And I'm sure you guys know how to do this. You've been making cards, right? So the next thing you'll need is the uh, uh, repositional adhesive. I'm using the 404. I also have tearaway stabilizer. And this time I'm using my five by seven hoop. I have some glue dots because that's how I glued on my little bow. Um, I think that's pretty much it, your, your thread. And you can do it all in one color if you like. So just red. So the first thing you'll do is just hoop your tearaway stabilizer. And I actually had cut this for a four by four hoop, so I hope it's big enough. I think it will be. Do you ever do this, get cheap, and then you wish you hadn't? Because if you just had been a little less frugal, things would have worked a little bit better. So it's too tight. I've got to loosen my little screw here. Move my ribbon out of the way. And try this again. It's kind of like the haste makes waste thing. It's like trying to be too cheap and you end up wasting stuff because it doesn't work. All right, so there is that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I get this design wordless or wirelessly over to my 1700E brother embroidery machine, which I love, love, love. Uh, if you don't have that, of course, you can save it on your USB drive and take it over to your machine. But since I do have the wireless connection, I'll show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and come down here and open up this free data transfer software that you get when you buy the Brother Machine. I come to my Sunbonnet Sue folder, open it, and then look down here for my design. I named this my final design, P-E-S. 
and after I highlight it, I click this down arrow. It's going to put it right down here in this trough. Here's my sewing machine listed over here. So all I have to do is click to send it to the sewing machine. And it says, please wait for a while. And it says it's done. So now we can go over to my sewing machine and stitch out the placement line for our card on this. Okay, I'm ready to go. I've got my machine ready. It's threaded. I need to go ahead and find that design I just sent over here, however. So I need to come here to the pocket. Whoops, go back. Go to the pocket, and I'll go to this pocket. And there it is wirelessly. So And hit Set, and Edit, Embroider. And it's ready to go. Okay, after it stitches this, I'll start the other stitching and I can tell you about that little rant. Okay, that's finished stitching and I'm ready to take my card. Remember now, the opening is going to be over here. So I'm actually going to put this like this. Okay, the opening's going to be over there. Remember what I need to do now. Take my 404 spray and do it somewhere where it's not going to get all over any of my machines. Notice there's that placement stitch now. So I know exactly where to put my card. Like that. And then I'll fold this thing up out of the way. Then I'll put this back in the machine. And it will begin stitching Sunbonnet Sue. Put that down. And go. Okay, now let's talk about my rant. Hopefully my machine won't be too noisy. Maybe I, well, I could pause it for a minute if I wanted to. Here's the thing. I don't know if you guys know or not. Well, let me pause this. Okay. Well, I have my $5 a month Patreon classes, so I do get paid for that. But I don't have a ton of other classes, like, say, Jennifer Baker or Tanner Bell or so many other people, right? Well, check out my screen up there and look what I got. Somebody got ticked. And said they won't subscribe to me because I take a sip of my coffee sometime and I should do it on my own time. Like, are you freaking kidding me? This is all my time. I'm not getting, you're not paying me for this. It's free. I bought the microphone. I bought the computer. I buy the supplies I need to show this stuff. I buy the software for myself. Half the stuff I make is not for anybody, it's for you guys, so I can teach you things because I love, love teaching. And if I tick you off so much because I take a sip of my coffee, I don't know what to tell you, girl. But listen, I know a lot of live presentations, they say, come on in, come on in, and they take forever and ever to get started. Oh, we're just going to wait for a while for people to come in. Hey, so-and-so, hey, so-and-so. Sometimes you almost feel like you're at romper room, right? So I freaking took a sip of my coffee. Check out my screen. Elizabeth says, this was four days ago and I just replied yesterday. She says, drink your coffee on your time. Was going to subscribe until you did that. Whoa, Elizabeth. Yo, girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just wrote back and said, hilarious comment when you're watching free teaching. L-O-L-O-L. -O -L. It's actually all my time. Okay, maybe you guys think I'm being cranky. Just one of the comments that I think is kind of humorous because I guess she thought she was giving me a slap and said, I would have subscribed, but you sipped that coffee. So that's it. That's my rant. <laughs> I don't usually rant on here. Trust me, I get all kind of interesting comments sometimes, but most of them are fabulous. And I so, so appreciate the really sweet comments and helpful comments and questions that y'all send me. That's my rant. Let's get back to stitching. Okay, as you can probably see, this says it's finished embroidering. So I'll say, okay, and I'll take this out. And we are all done. Except for, maybe you think this is a little boring looking. You know, just that red line work. But then first thing, actually, the next thing I have to do is go ahead and tear away this tear away stabilizer. Sometimes I actually like to cut it because of that stitching. So let me get some scissors out. And I cut this away. Really being careful not to cut the card. 
I have done that. I get in a hurry. Whoa, I almost cut some text. Could be using smaller scissors. Okay, that looks pretty good. This will end away. So this is what the card looks like right now. Hopefully you can see that well. And like I said, if you think that's a little bit boring, you know what you could do for those of you who love using markers or colored pencils? Why not go in and color this now? But it's so cool that it's textured in its actual stitching. Well, inside here you see something ugly, right? Not a problem. The next thing you do is this. Get a piece of regular typing paper. Hold on, I'll be right back. I gotta get it. Okay, so for your typing paper now, you'll just go ahead an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, fold it in half, or you're gonna actually cut it in half. So I could do this. And then with my scissors, if I think I can be very neat, if I were over at my other table, I would use my cutter, but I'll just use my scissors so I can do this quickly for you. Again, there I am not making something that I'm actually gonna use. This is just to teach you how to use your machine or your software. Then I would fold this in half and trim off just a smidgen on the side and on the opening edges, just like an eighth of an inch. Just so there's no chance it's gonna hang down below the card like that. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it inside of my card like this. To do that, what I like to use, and I forgot to show you this product before, is this double stick tape. You could use probably double stick, stick um, any kind of double stick tape. But I'll just take this, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it, hopefully you can see what I'm doing, on the inside of my card at the fold, like that, and cut it off at the edge. Then I'll peel off, or actually I could put the other piece on now as well. So sorry about my messy desk. I'm trying to hurry for y'all. Take another piece, find the end, and put one here from edge to edge and right up against the outer edge of the card. Flip this off. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off because this is double stick tape. It's just really heavy, nice double stick tape. You take this one piece off, leaving the sticky, sticky tape there. Then you take this piece that you cut and line it up right in here so that it hits where the fold is like that. And then I'll do the same thing to this side. Take off this part of the tape that and then just press this down on there like that and then when people open your card what they're going to see is this and they'll open it like this and they won't see any of that messy stuff and you can write your sentiment right in here so that's it i hope you like this tutorial and enjoy this please give me a thumbs up if you like my videos and subscribe and send some nice comments if you feel like it and I will see you again next time. Hey, if you want to know more about how to make the bow or on that other card where I'm not sure where I placed it, how to make the um, applique, let me know and I can show you that in another video. Again, thanks so much for joining me. Bye, y'all.